When people talk about the stories of the War of 1812, they often say that the Americans were fighting Canadians here in Toronto, but that is not correct at all. 200 years ago, many things were different. The shoreline of Lake Ontario was different. There was no Toronto. There was only a town of York at the mouth of the Don River. Fort York was just a few miles to the west. Canada was not a country. It was British North America. The people were not Canadians. We were the British. Welcome to York, E. Eh? John Graves Simcoe built a garrison on the present site of Fort York. Fearful of war with the United States, Simcoe planned to establish a naval base so that the British could control Lake Ontario. Simcoe also moved the capital from the exposed border of Niagara. I want a lake and a holiday named after me too. Lord Dorchester decided that Lake Ontario Squadron should be located at Kingston, 250 kilometers east of York. Dorchester thought Kingston could be supplied more easily than isolated York. Location, location, location. Anticipating war, Major General Brock strengthened Fort York, the fort's west wall, and the circular battery. Uh. Napoleon Bonaparte was the Emperor of France. He was fighting all over Europe, a threat to world peace. I am going to take over the world! <laughs> King George III of England was at war with France. We are not amused. I taunt you! I taunt you! The United States had declared themselves a neutral country in these wars in Europe. Yet they were trading with France, supplying materials, food, cannons, and rifles. So the British blockaded American ships. What do you want today? WMDs! <laughs> America was also expanding their own territories, looking both westward and to the north. British North America, Upper and Lower Canada. We're going to take over the world. American and British interactions had been strained since the Americans had declared independence from England, changing from a colony to a separate country. Now the Americans were going too far. We are not amused.
In 1812, the United States declared war and invaded Canada. On April 27th, 1813, the U.S. Army and Navy attacked York with 2,550 men, 14 naval vessels, and 85 cannons. The defending force of 750 British soldiers and Canadian militiamen, along with about 50 Mississauga and Ojibwe warriors, had only 12 large guns. The British commander, Major General Sir Roger Hale Schiff, then retreated eastward and blew up the fort's gunpowder magazine, located near today's memorial area. The explosion caused heavy casualties among the Americans, including the mortal wounding of their failed commander, Brigadier General Zebulon Pike. I got blowed up real good. Total losses in the six hour battle were 157 British, 320 American. After the battle, the native warriors withdrew into the forest, while Sheaf's British soldiers retreated east to Kingston. Run away! He who fights and runs away may live to fight another day. The delicate task of surrendering York fell to the local militia. The Americans occupied York for six days. During this time, they looted homes, seized or destroyed supplies, and burned two public structures, the government house and the parliament buildings. America, During their attack on Washington, the British retaliated by burning the Capitol building, the White House. <laughs>